Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come in, come in, come in. This is Tamika's Den. I am Tamika. Get on in here, y'all. Get on in here, okay? Kick off your shoes and relax your feet. You are now in the den. This is my review recap, y'all, for Raising Canaan, okay? Power Book 3, Season 2, Episode 8. Oh, Lord, y'all. A house is not a home, okay? And my Luther Vandross voice, baby. Stuff went down this episode, okay? It is on and popping, all right? We are going to have to see some slow singing and flower bringing, all right? Bodies, 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 bodies. That's what's going to have to go down, all right? Because they was playing a lot of games, honey. We had the past coming back. We had bodies coming back. We had consequences and repercussions. You know, I need Kenya to go back where the hell she came from. Wherever the hell she ran away all those years ago, you can send her trash ass right back there. I'm so freaking disgusted with her, okay? Rock had to set it off and let it be known, you know, to Palomar. Play freaking lotto chick, not me, all right? And baby, they had me worried throughout this whole episode. Every time I was seeing the direction it was going, all I was saying is no Marvin, no Marvin, no Marvin, no. Okay, damn, damn, damn. And my Florida Evans voice. Like, I know y'all not about to take Marvin up. I could see the setup. I could see the direction we was going in. I'm like, I see what y'all are doing. Okay. And I'm not here for it. So it's a lot to discuss today, y'all. All right. Let's go ahead and jump right into this. Take it from the top, from the beginning. And let's get into it. We started out this episode with Dominique bringing his raggedy behind to the hospital, honey. I said, yo, he's still up and walking. Yes, he was. Okay. He dragging on the side of the daggone walls trying to make it in the emergency room. And we hearing grown Canaan say, you know, this dude really thought he was going to sit around and wait. Okay. And like if it was going to basically get better, right, he was going to be able to make peace and all of this stuff. Right. And it would ease up. But he was like, that's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. Right. So he was basically like once you start bleeding, it's impossible to stop. And he says it only gets worse from there. It ain't no getting no better. Right. And it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse till it can't get worse no more. Meaning your ass is dead. OK. So here he go walking in the damn emergency room and falls flat on his back and basically was like, I'm dying. I said, you need to. You should have died. Truthfully, they should have killed you behind when you made the, you know, what I'm saying mess up when um, Rock and them was upstate that time and your behind had messed up. But for whatever reason, Sal left your ass living. And so he should be blaming himself technically that you're still alive. But we going to go ahead. OK, I digress. And so. Rack ends up stepping to Palomar, honey. They didn't waste no time. I said she was going to do it, and yes, she did. She went knock, 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 knocking at that door, okay, and said, open up, bitch, before I bust this place in, okay? It is Kanan's mama. And so here come Palomar coming to the door, and she was like, you know, stay away from my son. She want to talk about some. I don't know what you're talking about. She said, girl, your daughter Corinne already came and gave me the breakdown and told me what you've been doing, and I looked into you, and I know that Kanan is not the the first one that you've been doing it too so what you're gonna do is stay away from him you know palomar still trying to keep talking about some you know i don't know what you didn't hear what i said um i don't know what you're talking about she said bitch i heard what you said now what it is is do you hear what i'm saying okay do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth because this is gonna be your first and final damn warning you know she end up cocking that damn gun and putting it to palomar head and all of a sudden she talking about who and tears coming to her eyes and she just shaking that head up and down letting rock know that she understands i said oh what happened palomo i thought you was all hard you was throwing guns to Kane in a little while ago honey and throwing more than that you know what i'm saying now you ain't got shit to say so in the meantime famous in the hallway being nosy and listening or whatever and as she walking past him she like take your ass to school okay and i'm like yeah because i haven't seen them in school since god knows when so, you know, she went ahead about her business. Now, next we see in that Marvin is up at the spot with Unique and Unique is just letting him know like, yo, you know, Marco got killed. OK, in that home invasion in Westchester or whatever with the dentist or whatever, it's something about a smash and grab going wrong. But we know that that is bullshit. And so 
Marvin is like, why would I be having business with the Italians or whatever? Because he let him know, like, I know he was doing, you was doing a job for you. And so Nick was like, look, you ain't got to worry about Marco because Marco got killed. Therefore, you know what I'm saying? He can't talk about nothing. But who you got to worry about is basically Dominic, okay? He is still breathing. You know, Marvin looking all shaky and trying to light his cigarette and talking about some, well, you know, it's a good chance that he probably didn't make it. And Nick was like, you know as well as I do, okay? If that body ain't show up dead, then if he ain't dead, he's still talking, okay? How about that? That's facts on facts on facts. And so he was like, that's the shit you need to be worried about or whatever, right? And so we seeing Kanan sitting outside on this bench. I'm like, okay, Kanan, what you doing? Where you going? Who you waiting for? And this car come running past him, you know, screeching and shit. So I'm like, well, wait a minute. Who's that? You know, is this rock coming? No. Is this... How we're coming? Nope. This is Scrappy Mama coming, baby, and she ain't playing, okay? She said, I know my damn son did not kill himself. You know he didn't kill himself. I've been trying to get out with your mother. You know, you need to go ahead and have a conversation with her. Talk to her. Let her know that you know damn well that Scrappy would not do nothing to himself. You know, what is she doing about it? Because I don't see her doing nothing, and that shit don't sit right with me. You know, at first when she pulled up, he was like, yo, what you doing? You know who I thought you was or whatever, and he he was letting her know like Scrappy was a good guy. He was all right with me because we know they started out shaky, but in the end, they have respect for each other. And she was like, yeah, he said the same thing about you. OK. And he was telling her Scrappy is like family to them. She said, well, if he's so much damn family, you know, why is nothing being done? Why is other people that hurt him? OK, still able to go up and walk and all around up and through here. OK, I am confused. Somebody got to answer me. You know, if your mother do not do something about this, I will. I said, whoo, Lord, that's going to be a problem, okay? That's who y'all probably should have took care of instead of taking care of Scrappy because Scrappy, again, was innocent, and I'm always going to ride for Scrap. I'm sorry, but I'm still ticked off about that one, okay? And so, nonetheless, we shall move on, right? She basically was like, you know, how are these people going to be walking out here without a care in the world? No, we ain't going for that, all right? So, you know, I can't go for that. Oh, <laughs> no can do, right? So, basically, we seeing that Juke done miss school and she's going over here to Miss Kenya house, right? And she coming on smiling, talking about some, you know, hey, I miss school or whatever the case may be, what's going on? And Kenya was like, oh, well, we've been here waiting for you. So, Juke looking like, who's we? Next thing you know, we looking and seeing in the living room, it's like a whole damn congregation standing there waiting for her. So, I'm like, uh, why is all these people in the house? What is going on? Because the last thing we seen with them, they was at the church or whatever the case may be. And Juke had went out on a little date with homeboy. I don't remember anything else happening. So, I'm like, I'm confused. What are we doing here, uh, Kenya? But we move on to Lou and we see that he is basically going to that DJ and singing, you know, what happened to the song? Why hasn't it been played yet? You know, and it's Mr. DJ asking him, well, where's Crown at? And he's like, Crown is on vacation right now. OK, I'm the one that's here and I'm the one that's talking to you. So he's saying, you know, we've been busy. We're going to get to it. Crown know how this usually work. Don't worry about it and all of that. And then he want to get cute. You know, Zisa was there with him. So he was like, wait a minute. That's the artist. He was like, you know, she kind of cute. If she come upstairs, you know, sometimes things like that is very helpful, you know, to be persuaded to do some other things and get some other things popping. And so Lou pull out that gun and put that shit to him and put it in his mouth, honey, and was like, oh, OK, yeah, you were still talking what you were saying, because I think you want to go upstairs and you want to play that damn record, OK? right now like right 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 now okay and he was like not any other time not one time not two time not three time not four but right now okay so you know he basically talking and lose like i can't understand what you're saying and of course he can't because he got that damn gun in his mouth and he's like i'm gonna play the song now so he was like oh okay good he started fixing his clothes and everything and was like so you better get to work okay you're late I said, uh-oh, y'all keep playing around with Lou, all right? And Lou keep having to show y'all that he's tired of playing these damn games with y'all. So, you know, basically we get back to Kenya, y'all. Kenya telling Juke 
that she is not the person God wants her to be because she's telling her she could be a better person and all of this. And Juke is telling her she liked the person that she is. She's okay with the person that she is. And Kenya had the audacity and the nerve to be like, but you're not the person that God wants you to be. How do you know this, Kenya? You don't even know her. You don't know her no more than you know the damn walls or probably any of those other people that you're standing all around from the church with. You literally left this girl and just got to come back into her life. I'm confused. And how did she even find out that she was freaking, um, you know what I'm saying, gay to begin with? And she's over here telling her, God loves you. We want to help you. We want to turn you into the person that you need to be. And it just made me want to throw up. It was so freaking disgusting, Okay. And it was so hurtful. And I knew that this was probably what was going to happen when she found out. But I still, even this amazed me at how far they took it. Now, in the meantime, Rock is sitting in this daggone restaurant again with Cartier. He over here saying, you know, that right now, Abraham should look at this as a time out. You know, he's on the phone with Mr. Um... What the heck is his name? I don't freaking forgot his name. This that going fast that was there from last week. Y'all know who he's talking, who I'm talking about. It'll come back to me. But he was saying that Abraham needed to take some quiet time. Okay, this is an opportunity for him to reevaluate and reconsider the things that is going on. Okay, and he basically was like, you know. We got to do what we got to do. He said, the truth is we've been kind of flying too close to the sun lately anyway. All right. And so he was like, Icarus, look it up. You know, he was like, but anyway, you know, I got some more important shit in front of me that, you know, is demanding my attention right now. So I was kind of irritated with him saying shit because I'm like, um, you're literally just sitting there with Rock. OK, I know you ain't trying to call her shit. And I'm just not trusting nothing about Cartier. I already feel like he probably was down and in with the Jamaicans or whatever as far as the whole thing with Lou and now I feel like he's trying to be slick with Rock but I feel like Rock is still two steps ahead of him I don't take Rock to be no fool and so basically he lets her know when he hang up the phone like that's um Traymont that's his name Traymont right because his boy is the one that got caught with the gun and he wanted him to get a lawyer and help him get him out and he was like nah right now I'm not doing that you know he starts laughing of course, Rob just listening, her ears is perking up. He was like, you know, you give these DC niggas, you know, a refresher, honey. Okay. And on the organizational chart and they try to get, you know, champions and caviar dreams without me. So basically he wanted to teach them a lesson and he was like, you know, they don't know they need you until they need you, you know? And so he laughing about that and he's steadily shoving, you know, his caviar down his damn throat and Rock is looking like whatever, nigga, okay? She don't even feel like being bothered. Now, in the meantime, we get back to juking them, y'all. When I tell you I wanted to jump through the TV and beat everybody in that damn living room up, okay, this pastor calling himself preaching, okay, talking about he vanquishing these demons, okay, he is going to purge her, he's going to clean her of all these unholy things, you know, he's going to release the perversions that inhabit her soul, and, you know, freaking Kenya talking about, it's okay, baby, we here together, and Juke is just looking at her like the hurt in her freaking face, yo, and for you to be a mother and look back at your child, and you not picking up on how badly you hurting her right now, and as if, ah, uh, girl, child, we thought it couldn't get no worse, they begin to hold freaking Juke, bring a TV over to her, turn the TV on, basically playing porn for her, okay, that's showing a man and a woman, and the pastor is saying a man and his wife, or whatever the case may be, you know, are both naked and not ashamed, and they's moaning and groaning, she's trying to turn her freaking face, and he, they saying, you know, they lay together in holy matrimony as a man and a woman, and then at the same time, showing some prison crap to have a woman with a woman kissing and when they show that part the freaking pastor starts hitting her with a freaking stick y'all spoon whatever the hell it was i don't give a damn what it was and kenya gonna talk about some wait a minute nobody said nothing about no hitting or nothing like that and he basically was like oh well you know sister kenya um what is worse okay getting hit or basically going to hell this pales and this pain pales and you know comparison of going and spending eternity in hell and she gonna let him continue to hit her damn daughter girl you lucky honey 
You lucky. This is when I went to my rock coming and freaking pistol whipping her. Child, this pissed me off so bad. So he going to talk about how this is God's will and say the words with me, you know, um, help me, Lord, or whatever. And she's just sitting here crying or whatever. And meanwhile, we hearing grown Cain and say, everybody always asks me this question over and over and over from everywhere. When they meet Juke down the line, how did she get so cold blooded? And he said, It ain't my business to tell. Wasn't one single thing anyway, but shit like this stays with you forever. And if that's not a fact, I don't know what the hell is. And I know everybody be saying like, oh, what happened? What made them turn this way? One thing we can definitely say as we watch this daggone series is it definitely lets us know how Juke and Kanan ended up the way that they did. Because that was some sick ass shit right there. Moving on along from that, we got Marvin with his freaking slow behind sometime. I love Marvin to death, okay, really do. He's one of my favorite characters up here, always making me laugh, always having him something to eat. But we know sometimes Marvin moves be a little sloppy, and in this case, it was sloppy as hell. He's calling himself, calling around to hospitals or whatever the case may be, wondering if anyone came through. But he's sitting here, of course, he's looking for Dominic, but he's over here talking about some, you know, a white dude, somebody that looked like they white, you know. Oh, well, I can't go into the details and I can't say their name or whatever the case may be. But it's a friend of mine that's most likely a white Ital Italian guy. Like, really, Marvin? Of course, they're not going to give you no damn information if you just saying that and you can't give them no names. And then he get frustrated and he basically ends up throwing the damn phone across the room. You know, he wanted talk about he's some regular white boy and he can't give the name because of confidentiality confidentiality and shit i said marvin are you really this slow so then we got detective how where he go ahead and walk in the captain office asking him if he got a minute he like no but y'all don't be paying that no mind anyway that don't stop y'all from bothering me every minute so come in and get comfortable and he basically lets him know like listen this is about burke he like what the hell she did now he was like, yo, she over here basically looking into, you know, my old records, contacting my, reviewing my old records, contacting my old contacts and stuff like that. So he was like, why would she do that? He like, I don't know. I'm assuming there's something about my shooting, but I don't really know. And so Captain, you know, he's telling him she been marching to her own beat. And Captain telling him like, well, you know, she is new and she's just being overzealous or whatever. And Marvin, you know, Howard rather was even saying like, I'm willing to give her the benefit of the doubt here and assume that, you know, she's just trying to be thorough with her job, but she is doing too much. All right. He was like, you know overzealous is one thing or whatever the case may be and so you know she's probably just trying to help a partner out or whatever but i don't like that digging up old shit captain you know i'm gonna keep it real with you so he was like meanwhile she's stopping all over the actual investigation and so he tells him like she ain't new no more whatever the case may be and messing with your um you know, old partners things is not overzealous, it's overstepping. And so Captain agrees and was like, frankly, I'm going to keep it real. Burke has a lot of issues of her own to contend with right now. He was like, you remember that upper side girl, that old deed, okay? Her parents won't leave it alone. He was like, first, the mother was going real hard. Now the father's in the mix, of course, because Howard went and spoke to the father, remember? And he was like, he's making noise about Burke and saying that she actually been even hitting up other girls and stuff like that now and um you know he's making some pretty heavy accusations that she's involved in the girls you know death and that she's been praying on other girls and you know giving them drugs and he was like i don't know that don't sound like her he says well i told burke before that she shouldn't be poking her nose and stuff in the first place or whatever where it don't belong and based what you're t based on what you're telling me now obviously she haven't been listening so i said mm -mm, burke you know, in the meantime, Famous is there chilling at the house and Kane and come like, what the hell have you been doing? OK, why well, wasn't you in school? He wanted to tell him he overslept. He was like, for the last two weeks, I saw oh, now all of a sudden everybody want to be back in school because we know they was not going before. But apparently school started two weeks ago. And Juke done missed it just to go there and have to deal with her mama and her bullcrap. 
And now Canaan is the only one that apparently actually went and he goes there, to, you know, to find out where Famous haven't went. So Famous is asking him about Crown. He like, nah, I don't know nothing about Crown. I haven't seen him. And he's like, damn, because this guy been saying he can't get in the studio that he has still owed him more time. And then he basically was like, yo, how I didn't start out with this. He was like, your mom came here this morning. She woke me up. So he was like, what the hell are you talking about? He was like, you trying to play games with my mother, whatever. He like, no, I'm being dead ass serious. Your mom came here and was basically going in on Dan Palamore. You know, she was not playing. He, she was about to put her foot off in, you know, Corinne's mom's ass. She went mad hard and she told her, don't ever see you again. She was going to lay her ass out. So he was like, what? He was like, she pulled out the still and everything. So he, you know, came and pissed off now. He like my damn mother. So he go out and he slamming the damn door or whatever. And he go next door banging down Palomar door. And she was like, you know, Kane and go away. Okay, I cannot mess with you no more, right? She just basically know that rock is for real. And so he was like, yo, what my mother said to you or whatever. And then she cracks the door and she's like letting him know, like she said for me to stay away from you. And that's exactly what the heck I'm going to do. And she lets him know that she knew who he was before she even approached him. And she knew who his mother was. So I'm saying, well, girl, if you knew that, because she going to talk about some that actually made me even more attracted to you and made me want to get with you even more. I think that's why I even stepped to you in the first place. If she's being honest. And I said, if that's the case, then you know that Rock didn't play no game. So that should have made you want to go in the other direction, girl. You must be a little too slow too. And she was telling him it's too complicated and she can't mess with him no more. And he was like, she ain't going to do nothing to you. And he was like, neither. She said, neither are we baby. When Cannon says she ain't going to do nothing to you. And then he bang a Palomar open the door. Hey, Palomar open the door. All mad or whatever. I said, Cannon, take your little behind home. Okay. So he go back next door to Famous and he all huffing and puffing and mad. Famous done went in his book bag and was seeing the paternity test like, yo, what is this? And Kanan was like, what are you doing? You went through my stuff. He was like, yo, I thought that it was my book bag and I was going to reach for my homework. I said, how the hell you thought it was your, yours when the damn paper was folded up in the envelope, though, um, Famous? Really? So he was like, oh, now all of a sudden you worried about doing homework. So Famous was saying to him, like, yo, why the hell you got a daddy test when you already know who your daddy is? Why would you need? She was, he was like, I know it's you because it says KS, which is Caden Stark, and this says MH. Who's MH? That's DEF CON. So he all in it, and then Kanan just sitting there looking stuck because I guess he still really didn't look at it too, you know, thoroughly since the time that Howard gave it to him. Now, in the meantime, Sal out here trying to have, you know, the people coming over and stuff like that, bringing the food and all of that, of course, since Marco passed and you got Unique standing out there and, you know, he's letting him know, like, what was my kid doing What you know, what connections is it with this dentist and Unique is telling him, I don't know. And he was like, well, I'm going to need to find out because he was working with somebody and I want to know who the hell that person was. And Unique was telling him, like, Marco be out here on his own shit sometimes. You already know that. He was like, well, I know the cops said it was another guy there and I want to know who that was. And excuse me, and I want them brought to me. So I said, mm -mm, you know, if he's still breathing, okay, because he needs to have a personal conversation with him. So Unique was looking like a little like, oh boy, here we go. Now we get to the studio and Zisa behind over here talking about some, you know, do you want to have sex? And um, Lou was like, no, she was like, damn, a whole bunch of other guys would prefer to have, you know, sex with me and be wanting to have sex with me. He was like, well, I'm not other guys. But then all of a sudden that radio, you know, that song came pumping through on the radio, honey. And he turned around and started rubbing him his damn thing. And she was like, yeah, now you want to have sex, right? And he was like, yeah, now I do. So finally they get it in. It's like that's all Zisa want to do every damn minute is have damn sex. Okay, as far as I'm concerned, she could go too. I could care less about her. Now, Captain go ahead and call Burke in the office. And she like, what is that about him, you know? How we like, I don't know, girl. Okay, they've been complaining about cutting overtime hours down. You know, maybe it's about that. Now, when she get in there, he told her, like, you know, you've been investigating Detective Howard and you need to stop that. That's the exact opposite of what I told you to do. I told you to keep a low pro profile, you know, keep your head down, come in here and do your job, and that's that. And she was like, who told you that? And he was like, listen, I got eyes and ears everywhere, all up and through and around this place, okay? I know everything that's 
going on even when y'all think I don't know what's going on okay so he was like you know that's why my name is Captain Batiste baby I said I know that's right okay check her ass because I'm tired of Burke I'm so sick of that lady I don't know what the hell to do y'all know how I feel y'all know what I say every single time get her up out of here okay Burke gotta go period point blank so as we move on, he lets her know that this is her final warning, okay, her last and final warning. He also lets her know that the big bosses is watching her ass, okay, and that she better stay out of everybody else's business that is not hers because at this point, you will be wise to really, you know, tread lightly or whatever the case may be, right? And that's that on that. And she was like, is that all? He was like, yes, it is. So when she went back to the desk, she basically let Marvin know it was not about, you know what I'm saying, no overtime hours, <laughs> okay? And so, you know, Rock want to give Kanan the tour of the house or whatever, right? So she's sitting outside the house waiting because now, the, you know, this don't went through. She done finally been able to get this dad going house now right and so she's making this call while she's sitting out there you know double checking saying you know from Maryland right and um she's like weapons possession so just like we thought she overheard the Cartier conversation and she's telling this person to get it handled because she's gonna try to go ahead and get that person out that way Tremont will look and see that she helped him when Cartier wouldn't but again I don't trust Cartier I feel like all of this is a setup and that's why he was saying it in front of her now Kanan gets here and he says he took the bus and she was like, you know, the bus ain't so bad. He was like, yeah, then why you ain't taking it? Okay, when the last time you took the bus? And she told him to come on in so she could give him the tour of this house. And he's not impressed. She was like, you know, this is ours. And he was like, you mean this is yours, you know? And she was like, no, it's all ours. You know, this is our new beginning. This is what it was all for. This is what we've been doing everything for. This is the payoff. This is the accomplishment, you know, and all that good stuff. And he was like, Southside is good enough for me. She was like, well, this better be good enough for you now, you know? Of course, he don't want to leave. And so... She's showing him, you know, into the kitchen. He following her, whatever the case may be. And he finally just asked her, like, yo, what the hell, you know, you came at Corinne mom like that for? And she was like, because she was messing with my damn son. What the hell you expect me to do? You know, at the end of the day, your girlfriend or your ex-girlfriend, I should say, told me what she had been getting into. And um, what was I supposed to do? Stand by and let that happen? He going to talk about you could have came and talked to me first. She said, no, I don't have to talk to you. You my child and that's a grown ass woman. If she going to do shit like that, I'm going to approach her. She going to hear from me, your mother. That's how that works. And I can say, I don't agree with a lot of the raggedy stuff that damn, you know, rock behind you either. But when it comes to that, rock, me and you was here, baby. We here. You damn right I'm stepping to you, okay? And so... You know, he, he going to talk about some first off. I ain't no boy. She ain't do nothing to me that I ain't want her to do. She said, you feel that way now, but you may not feel that way later. So he was like, how you know how it feels? She was like, I don't have to know how it feel, okay, to know that it's not right. And he was like, well, wait a minute. Maybe you do know how it feel. Oop, shots fired, okay? She was like, I don't know what you talking about. He's talking about his damn daddy Howard, okay? We know what he's talking about. And so she was like, and I don't like the way you said that shit. So he was like, well, scrap mother rolled up on me today too you know he lets her know about that and she basically don't believe of course that he killed himself she thinks someone else did it and she want to know why you ain't doing nothing about it so she was like it ain't nothing to do she you know of course she gonna tell him she lost her son she grieving she can't believe he not here no more so you know she wants somebody to blame because the truth hurts so Kanan said oh truth hurts right you know Kanan don't believe nothing coming out of rock no face no more and she caused that you know so he told her I'm gonna go and stay with fame for a while and she you know he said he needed to clear his head she was like clear your head of what he said you and she was like look because of that rapist bitch, she was like, no, it's way more than that. And you know that. She said, well, we said we wasn't going to keep no more secrets, no more lies. He said, yeah, we did. She said, so what's up? Say what you got to say. Obviously, you got something on your chest you want to say to me. You should probably say it and go ahead and spit it out and stop dancing around the boy. He going to turn and just be like, nice house. You know, because at this point, I guess he feel like no matter what she say, it's going to be a lie. You know, so we get the freaking guys, you know, the Italians hanging around. Um, 
you know, Sal over here giving this toast or whatever, saying, you know, we have the sons that are born to us, and he's like to Marco, and they all saying salute. Honey, while they came in there and told him, you know, we know who it was that was with Marco, it was Dominic, and he was like, of course it was, okay, because he already know he a damn screw up, and my thing is, Sal, that's partly your fault, because you the damn one that freaking should have killed him when he made that first mistake. I don't care. That, you know, part falls on you. So now we see that Marvin come home and he, you know, well, I don't know if he had came home. He had drove up and Juke ended up being in the backyard, literally burning up, um, damn clothes that Kenya bought her on the grill. So he walking back there like, you know, what the hell going on here? And he was like, what's up? What you doing? What's happening? She was like, oh, I'm burning all the stuff she got me. In the meantime, the tears are just falling. Yo, my heart was so freaking broke for Juke. And I was so freaking pissed at damn Kenya, you know. We knew it was going to be something she was going to do to hurt her and disappoint her again. But I really did not want it to go this way. And so, you know, basically... um. Kanan goes to Famous house, but Famous is not home or whatever, you know, he like, damn, where you at Famous or whatever, right, and then, um, you know, basically, um, Dominic, when they go to the hospital, he lets them know, like, telling Sal, you know, it was a hit, Sal, and, hit, and you know, he's like, okay, well, you know, who was the hit, you know, who told y'all to go do the hit, basically? And, so, you know, here go freaking Dominic. Oh, you know who it was. He was like, obviously, I don't or I wouldn't be asking you who was it. And so, of course, with they racist behinds, they over here N-word this, N-word that, especially Dominic. You already know he didn't like them. You know, that's why we should have never let them get away before. And that's why we should have did something. And it was the in words you know brother that got the hair and got the mustache and all of that stuff and he basically was saying let him make this right for him and as soon as he get better you know he would be the first one out there and he knows that he would die for him or whatever basically trying to suck her up to him but this part was pissing me off too like yes i get it marvin shouldn't have been going making no deals with them you know i know he thought he was being smart because he was trying not to do it himself he had no way of knowing what the hell was going to happen to marco and dominique dumb ass is the literally the one that shot him so it's like what are we doing here okay but as soon as they walk out or whatever the case may be from the room you know sal was telling him everything was gonna be okay don't worry about it or whatever and when he got in that hallway he was like yo he lights out on him okay he does not get to see dawn and as far as you know the end bitch okay and her brother, he wants a meeting with her, just the two of them, of course, talking about Rock. And he was like, maybe you should have just killed her when you was up there in Scarsdale. So he was like, um, yeah, maybe I should have, okay? And if you give me the chance, then I would get it done, you know what I'm saying, with the, any opportunity that I would have now. So I said, you know, y'all all full of crap, whatever, you know. So now he going to set up, you know the meeting with her or whatever the case may be and so we see that Kanan ends up going to Malcolm house and asking him if he could sleep the night there and you know Malcolm just opens the door and let him in or whatever and then we get back to this daggone hospital room and of course we see the guys end up coming in and smothering Dominique ass with a damn pillow okay I don't know how the hell he really thought he was just gonna go and get admitted in the hospital and tell them this and know that he killed you know Sal damn son and was really gonna make it out like child bye Dominic bye and so you know, Rock is basically looking at Kanan's room in his empty bed, you know, thinking to herself or whatever the case may be, right? And then um, next thing we see, you know, Marvin done drove up to damn Kenya house with um, with Miss Juke. So I said, okay, okay now, all right, I'd like to see it, right? Finally, we get in a bond, but at the same time, that started making me nervous because I'm like, okay, that means that Marvin is making amends. He's making his different changes. We've seen such growth and such change inside of Marvin. And the only real thing that he still had over his head was the fact that Juke wouldn't forgive him. And if she opened up to him enough to tell him what, down, what went down with her mother and bring him there, then I'm like, oh, God, yeah, Marvin is probably about to go right now, right? I'm like, please, no, please, no, please, no, okay? 
Because that really would have been like the only other thing that he would have needed to do at this point, right? And so, you know, he go ahead and he jump out the car when he see Kenya, um, you know, coming out her building or whatever the case may be, right? And he call out to her. She over here taking some trash and, you know, Juke just still sitting in the car because he was like, there she is right there. And he run up on her. He's like, yo, what the hell is wrong with you? He was like, you know, how the heck you going to be sitting there doing something like that to your dad going daughter, whatever the case may be after you don't miss all these years and just up and left her or whatever. So she talking about some, you know, I was doing this because I loved her and I want the best for her and I'm trying to clean her of her sins or whatever the case may be. We can't have her out here just sinning. And he was like, girl, you got the nerve to talk about sinning, sinning when you left your damn daughter. That wasn't the sin or was it when you went and, you know, what I'm saying jumped with the daggone basketball player and then left your daughter. You know, her father and wasn't by her side and all of that different kind of stuff, right? And then that's when she wanted to haul off and slap him. And I said, well, I guess the truth hurts because I didn't hear nothing that he freaking said wrong, girl. Yeah, you out of pocket, okay? Now, when she slapped him, he looked like he was going to flinch a little bit, right? But he didn't actually look to me anyway like he was going to hit her. But because of what already happened in the past with Juke, of course, when she seen him, you know, kind of flinch. <laughs> from the slap then that's when juke ended up being like dad and jumped out the car and ran over there too okay to try to you know what i'm saying make sure that he don't hit her or whatever even if he was thinking about doing it and so you know he was kind of calmed down and stepped back for a minute at that point once he seen that juke was out there on the street with them too and she still want to be saying to Juke some, you know, oh, I love you. I care about you. This is why I was doing this for you. I want the best for you. Again, I want to know how she even knew anything about what was happening with Juke to begin with. But, you know, I like the little read that Marvin gave her because that shows growth with him, too, and that he has a better understanding now. And he knows that that is not right. And that's not how, you know, you handle it and how you treat somebody. And on top of that. You got the nerve to be talking about sinning when you abandon your own damn daughter. Who are you to decide whether, you know what I'm saying, she's a sinner or not? And so it was like, you got a lot of damn nerve, you know? And I said, she lucky Rock didn't come near because honestly, I think Rock would have gave it to her worse than damn Marvin, honey. But when Juke got over there and she was trying to tell her all that crap about I'm trying to save you and all that. And man, let me tell you, the, what's her name? I can't think of it right now. Haley Kilmore, I think, that plays damn juke. She plays the hell out of that. The way she be bringing them damn tears up, honey. And she brung that tears up and said, no, you just swallow a whole bunch of bullshit, okay? But I'm not going to swallow it. You ain't going to sit here and play games with me. I ain't going for that. And she basically was like, I'm especially not swallowing your shit. I was fine without you. I don't need you. I never needed you. I'm good. And she talking about some. I love you, Laverne. No, you don't. She was like, I love you. And um, Juke said, no. No, you don't. You don't even freaking know me, bitch. Okay, she ain't say that. I'm saying that. And she yelling after her, Laverne, Laverne. No, Kenya, we don't want you here. Okay, goodbye, good riddance. And so seeing that connection between them, I'm like, oh, Lord, I can see where this is going right now. Because her and Marvin just walk away together. You know, you got um Howard coming, Wade Kane and up. He talking about some, you know, I didn't know what to make you, but this is what I got. So this is what you get. And he bringing him some burnt up toast and, you know, almond juice. And Kanan was like, damn, I didn't even realize I was still here. And he's like, you know, it's good. That'll work. But he could barely bite into that damn toast. OK. And so he was like, you know, I didn't want to interrogate you last night when you got here. But what's really good? What's going on? What made you come here? And he was like, just couldn't go back to my house. He was like, what's wrong with your house? He was like, she's there. And I didn't feel like being bothered. But he didn't want to also get into it too much deeper than that. You know, Howard over here looking confused. And he was like, you got a back door. I could go out of or something. So he told him, yeah, it's one right there. And he just looked and he was like, you know, you go through the kitchen. So Kanan went ahead and left, right? And so now we got Rock in the damn supermarket shopping, honey. And who come creeping her ass around even after what the captain said? I told y'all she begging, 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 begging. And when this chick get hers, honey, it's going to be a death well-earned, well-deserved. 
burp raggedy ass. Here she come. Oh, you don't want to, you know, put them in the refrigerator for them to get hard while Rock over here picking her damn apples. And Rock was like, child, if you came in here to talk to me about anything other than damn apples, you could just keep to stepping. So she was like, you know, oh, well, you and, you know, um, Howard got a complicated past. You know, wasn't you his CI back in the days when you were younger and you knew him when he was undercover, whatever the case may be, you was him informant. And Rock was like, listen, I don't know about you, <laughs> but um, I'm about to go over your head, detective, okay? Uh, so the, you need to take a chill pill, all right? And so she was like, you know, this is over, no, rather, she said, this is over your head, okay? <laughs> and, um, you know, she was like, I think you better stick to them strands that's up there and stop trying to pick and reach, you know what I'm saying, stuff that's above you that you don't really freaking know about or whatever, right? And so, I don't know, again, we getting warnings. She got warnings from this side, that side, the other side, inside, outside, and she just still going to keep going till she's dead. That's bottom line with Burke, you know? And so, you know Rock wasn't going to tell you nothing anyway. If you didn't know, now you know. But she basically let her know that, you know, you need to go ahead and fix your hair up because it's a stringy mess. And then, you know what I'm saying? That's what you need to concentrate on instead of being into other bullshit. And she was like, go sell your bullshit somewhere else. Okay, I'm buying, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm buying these today. The only thing I'm buying today is apples, okay? And some pie crust. I ain't buying your bullshit. And she go ahead and go about her business. Like I said, I don't know why you thought you was going to intimidate damn rock. And so... She, you know, keep it moving. Now, we see Juke and Marvin saying outside the house. He asked him if she's all right. She's like, nope, I'm not, you know. And he just was saying to her, like, look, I know I messed up. And she was like, please, not today, okay? Another day we could do it, but not today of all days. You know, he was letting her know he figuring out a lot of stuff. And he just wanted to try to say, and she was like, no. She was like, I can't, I can't, I can't. She was like, you know, just give me time or whatever, right? And so... He was saying, you know, she says she get it. She understand where he trying to come, but it has to be another time, not today. So he was like, OK, cool. And he was like, well, you know, it was good enough for me that you called me dad back there. And so she just was like shaking her head. You know, yeah. And she was about to go ahead and get out. So she said she would talk to him later. He was like, I'll hit you. So he was like, oh, my God, that's not what I meant to say. He says, I'll call you later. You know, he was like, that was a slip up on my part. He said, you know, words matter. What you do matters. Yeah. You know how you come at a person matters, your body language and all of that, your tone. He was like, sometimes, you know, you may say something. You may not even be mad. But the way that you come off, it seems like you're angry and you're not. And so he was like, I've really been learning a lot, you know what I'm saying? So that was starting to make Juke smile and soften up a bit, right? And he was like, this anger thing is a motherfucker, but I'm on top of it. And she was like, I know you are. So she does see the work that he's been doing, right? And so she puts up her fist to give him a pound, and then he give her one. And I said, Marvin is dying, is he? Is he? Is he? You know, and then he gonna talk about you dumb motherfucker. He was like, you sitting here talking about hit or whatever, right? And then he go and he drive or so we see you know Kanan and the house he packing up stuff and Drew comes in and she's asking him what he's doing and he letting her know that he want to go ahead and you know move out or at least stay to at famous house for a minute she like well you sure do look like you packing up a whole lot for a minute okay and he was just letting her know like i can't stay here no more i can't trust her he was like i'm sorry it's just been getting worse it's not just one thing it's a whole bunch of things it's just not working for me you know and juke end up coming in and sitting down or whatever as he's packing up the stuff and he was like you know everything is a lie or whatever she don't tell me you know what i'm saying the truth about nothing or whatever right and i just can't trust her i don't know what to trust i don't know what's the truth and what's not the truth anymore i can't tell the difference and so he was like when she tells me things she act like she's doing it for the benefit of me but really it's for her and so she let him know, like, at the end of the day, Rock loves you, Kanan. And he was like, that might be true, but I'm starting to really feel like I don't even know what's what anymore. I don't know what's true. I don't know what that, you know what I'm saying, means for me. I don't know what it means for her. 
He was like, some things that I didn't know then, I know now, and I wish I didn't know. Of course, we know what he's talking about with that. And he was like, I still don't know what it means, right, about her, about me, about anything. And so, you know, that's when she was just letting him know that your mom loves you. And he was like, sometimes I feel like she uses that love to do a lot of this ill shit. That's facts on facts on facts, right? Nobody can't argue with that. And so... He was like, I think she gonna, you know what I'm saying, just keep doing all this shit and then saying it's for me or whatever, so I gotta get the hell up out of here. So she was just basically telling him, like, well, you know, he said he had to figure stuff out for himself, and she was like, well, one thing I could tell you is that, you know, Famous House is a damn mess, okay? He don't clean up nothing, and you gonna need some more draw drawers, because your ass don't be knowing how to do no damn laundry. Now, in the meantime, Rock, Lou, Marvin is meeting with Unique. She's saying, what the hell do he want to meet me for? What is this about? And Unique basically is like, Marvin know what it's about. Ask him. Marvin over here choking on his damn soda. And she was like, what is it? What the hell happened? So he was like, oh, well, it may not even be about that. Still trying to play stupid. He was like, you know, we don't know that for sure. And Unique is like, yes, we do. Okay. Yes, the hell we do. So she was like, fuck you do, Marvin. What is going on? He was like, you heard about that shit, Scar Giselle? She was like, why the hell would I care about Scar Giselle? I ain't got no business there. He was like, it's been in the news. So Lou was like, you mean the home invasion? He was like the dentist and the girl that got shot up. So they was like, yeah, what was the girl name? Of course, Marvin ends up being like Antonio yo okay aka tony deep right so now they putting two and two together and they realizing what the hell this boy done damn did so he was like yo you sent him there too whatever so rock just get up because they was like yeah the one that got shot was marco boziani you know sal's son freaking rock was like no 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 okay hell the fuck no all right in the meantime you know kane and reading that damn test real real good now he all like and looking up and it's finally really dawning on his damn ass it only took a million damn years okay so rock got ahead to this bowling alley and she walk in there first sal making you know, small talk, oh, have you ever bowled before? She telling him, yeah, back in the days, you know, I used to bowl with this guy, but then when I got tired of him, I stopped, and he says he was the same way with this girl he liked when it came to tennis, but he couldn't even send the ball, you know, over the fence, so she was like, what happened to the girl? He was like, I end up marrying her, so she's like, okay, so he was like, bottom line, your brother gotta go. And she was like, uh, no, he don't. I'm sorry for your loss, but my brother not going nowhere. It's not my brother for that it went bad. Sometimes with jobs, shit goes bad. You know, again, I give you my condolences or whatever, but my brother's not going out. You know what I'm saying? For no bull crap that he didn't have nothing to do or whatever the case may be, right? And so he was like, why you always got to act so hard? Why you always got to go so extra? Is it because you feel like you a woman, so you got to go harder? You know, with it being a man's world, he was like, you basically, come here and spit in my face or whatever the case may be you know he says I know my son was a mess up and he didn't do everything right but you know in his short little life that he lived but he was my kid and he was like what happened to him can't go unanswered so basically she was like well my brother didn't kill your son and he's telling her that he's luck she's lucky that he's saying her brother and not her son you know and she just basically feeling like shit happened she was like I don't owe you nothing I don't owe you no type of debt for that and so he said had your brother came and talk to me first we wouldn't even be sitting here right now right and when he was saying that he's a big believer in balance and calm and all this other stuff and that the laws have to be respected and she, you know what i'm saying so he's asking her for her brother she like i said lucky that he didn't say her son so she was like listen i don't know about all that shit you talking about but it don't work like that for me it ain't nothing about that that's fair it's nothing about that that's bringing no damn balance she was like with all due respect my son or my damn brother did not mess up nothing you know she was like on the south side we pay what we owe and we don't owe you shit and so you know of course he's not used to nobody talking to him like that and she was like again i'm sorry for your loss but your loss is not mine and mine is not yours and that's balance that's the balance you gonna get and so 
basically when he was saying, you know, do you act like that because you got to be all hard or whatever the case may be and as a man and all of that. She said, nah, it ain't about no man. She was like, of course you would think and got to make it about you and how big your balls or your, you know what I'm saying, thing is. She was like, it's about me and the fact that that's just how I am. That's how I roll. That's how I get down. And that's that, bitch. Okay. <laughs> and so she was like, nah, Sal, it ain't about you or any other man. You know what I'm saying? I'm flexing because that's me and that's who I am. And so she was like, again, you know what I'm saying? My condolences to you and your family. So when she got up and walked away, he was like, to yours too, okay? And so his dad on, you know what I'm saying, boy, to make the call. So the next thing you know, they done found Crown Body, y'all. They done dug Crown Raggedy behind up and pulled him out and was like, Crown, come out, y'all. I said, uh-oh, here we go. Bodies, bodies, bodies. Then we move on from that and we see Marvin going up to Renee. He's saying that he want to talk to her about the conversations he had with his daughter, about the way that he's improved. He want to, you know what I'm saying, um... You know, she's saying that she glad he reached out like this. He's saying he could use some advice and some guidance. She's telling him she happy he came to her and that he deserves, you know what I'm saying, the good stuff. Baby, while they rolled up right then and there and was like, Marvin, <laughs> started spraying, baby. And we do not know if Marvin and Renee got shot, if Marvin just got shot, if Renee just got shot. I want to know what the hell happened now, y'all. I'm so worried. For some reason, I'm feeling like Marvin is not dead. I'm feeling like he's probably going to be really seriously injured. And it's going to be Renee that has gotten killed. And that Marvin is going to have a very deep, you know, heavy regret. And going to go even harder now. Because of the fact of her getting killed and her being innocent. And her being somebody that helped him so much. You know what I'm saying? To try to change him and help him with his anger and knowing that she didn't deserve it. That's what I think is going to happen, guys. Um, I don't know, though. We shall see. But we know it's going to be a war. Either way, it's about to go down. Put it in the comments. Let me know. Let's discuss. Let's discuss. Let's discuss, honey. Like, comment, share, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. If you are so inclined, give me a wave. Let me know you came by. Put some flames up in the sky. Oh, yeah, this one was a good one. <laughs> Talk to y'all later till next time.